Chapter 4, Section 4, Concavity and Curve Sketching. Concavity and Curve Sketching. Just finish section three. So let's look at recap everything we've done so far. What can we find with the original function? Yeah, today today we started with monotonic functions. This is section three. So, what can we find with the original function? What's that? Mm, not really. Only for quadratic equations. But higher order polynomials, we can't use it. Find points on the graph. We can find the x-intercept. The y-intercept. That's all we, we can really find. We can tell a lot, though. We can tell the shape of the curve. maximum number of solutions possible the maximum number of indices possible That's pretty much it. That's, a, that's all you can tell us. What can the first derivative tell us? Increasing, decreasing intervals. What else? Extremas, also called the vertices. That's all we found in the last section. You see how we're building up the graph of the picture itself, of the function itself? We know it's increasing where it's decreasing. We know where the extrema are. We found the critical values. Those are the points of the, the maximum minima. Plug those into the original function, and that will give us a location of those points. So now we venture into another domain, that of the second derivative. The second derivative tells us how the graph bends and turns.
Remember, the first derivative only tells us if it's increasing or decreasing. The second derivative now tells us exactly what the shape is going to look like. Concavity. What do you think concavity means? Yeah. Bend of the curve. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you used that word. We have two types. We have convex and concave. What's the difference? That's a good question. We have to look at, now we're going to get the slopes of the things, the bend of them. So to be convex, it's concave up. Concave is normally concave down. What does that mean? The bend of the function, the bend of the curve. Why is this curve called concave up? It's pointing up. It's, if you hold a cup, it's holding it up. The bend is going up. The bend is going down. That's what we're looking at here. I'll give you the short, short and sweet of this, since we're running out of time. Remember, the first derivative, we said, we found that, we found we're increasing and decreasing. If the first derivative is less than zero, if the first derivative is greater than zero, and if the first derivative equals zero. The second derivative the concavity of the function. If it's positive, if it's negative, and then it also has a point where it equals zero. So if the first derivative is less than zero, what do we know about it? If it's greater than zero? If it's equal zero? The vertex. It's straight, yeah, it's a horizontal line. Remember, all of this stuff blends together what we did when we first started talking about it. Remember, the first derivative finds the slope of the tangent line to the curve at any point. So all this stuff, when we say slope is positive or negative, we're talking about the slope of the tangent line to the curve at some point. So this is all this, how this stuff all relates. Now, if the second derivative is positive, we say it's concave
if the second derivative is negative, we say the concavity is down, it's concave down. This last point, the last part is going to be pretty tricky, but notice how we have a positive slope here, we have a negative slope here, and we have no slope there. At this point, it changes at the second, uh, first derivative, it equals zero. That's where there's no, no sign. Now, neither it's decreasing nor it's decreasing. The same stuff happens down here. At some point, if, at some point, if on the left-hand side, the second derivative is positive, it's concave up. Even though the first derivative of this is still positive, it's increasing. The first derivative here is also positive, but the second derivative is negative. You see what we're talking about now? Concavity. So from so there's, there has to be a point. There has to be a point where the concavity is neither up or down. That's what happens at the second derivative equals zero. We call that the point of inflection. The point of inflection, on one side of it, it's going to be the second derivative is positive or negative. On the other side, it's the opposite. Can you have two concave down functions? No, impossible. Because as long as it's concave down, it stays concave down until it starts changing to concave up. So unlike the first derivative, where you, you can have two increasing functions, you know, the, the cubic function, you can have increasing, increasing, but the concavity has to be different on both sides. So this point is also the point of inflection. So far so good? So now, a function has to be continuous, has to be twice differentiable. You have to be able to take the derivative twice of the function. Is this function twice differentiable? No. Because, yes, we can find the slope of this curve, of this line. It's a positive slope, so it's an increasing graph. But the second derivative is zero. It doesn't exist. I mean, there's nothing. You have to be able to take the equation and set it equal to zero to find an x. Because for the second derivative, to equal zero, you have to have an x value, be able to solve for x. Not like this. Because here, every x value gives you a zero value. So it's neither concave up nor concave down. It's a straight line. Let's take an example. Let's use
Let me the concavity of this one. First derivative is 2x. What does this tell us? Is it increasing? No, because remember the graph. Well, this one says, if you set it equal to 0, we get 2x equals 0 x equals 0. So at the origin, we have a extrema. So from negative infinity to 0 and from 0 to positive infinity. I put negative 10 in there and put it in that So that tells me if the graph is decreasing from negative infinity to zero, it's decreasing. At zero, it equals zero. So we have a, a extrema. And then on the other side, it's greater than zero, so it's increasing. Looking at the graph, what do we expect the, the concavity to be? Concave up. If we find the second derivative, we get 2. It's concave up at every x in the domain of all real numbers. This is the least amount possible because it has to be twice differentiable. In other words, these exponents have to be two or higher. Or it could be a trig function where they're infinitely changing. All right, so let's look at x cubed. So the first derivative gives me what? 3x squared. What is that going to tell me? Do I have a, how many vertices do I have? Take this equation, set it equal to zero. We only have one vertex. But let's see if it's really a vertex. From negative infinity to positive infinity. Try negative one. So the first derivative of negative one gives us squared. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. It's greater than 0, so it's increasing. At 
step one. First derivative, three times one squared is also three. It's also increasing. If we just use this alone, what this is saying is anything to the left of it's increasing and anything to the right is increasing. We can surmise that we have this kind of graph. Isn't that increasing, increasing? That's where the second derivative comes in. On the same intervals, negative one. The second derivative is less than zero, so it's concave down. The second derivative at one, six, which is greater than zero, so it's concave up. Where is the second derivative equal to zero? At zero. So we have a point of inflection. Now, the second derivative gives us shape to the curve, to the graph. We know that anything to the left of zero is going to be concave down. So I know from here it's going to be concave down. We have a point of inflection at zero, zero. And anything to the positive realm will have concave up. We have a bend like this. So you see how the first and second derivative work together to give us an idea what the graph looks like and the second derivative bends for us. Everybody, everybody okay with that? We have to throw some trigonometry in there. y equals 3 plus sine x on the interval 0 to pi. All right, let's look at these things. The first derivative gives us cosine of x. Where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? On the 2 pi. So if we look at the graph of cosine, at 0, cosine is 1. At pi over 2, it's 0. At pi, it's negative 1. 3 pi over 2, it's 0, and at 2 pi, it's 1 again. So looking at this from 0 to pi to 2 pi. From 0 to pi over 2, we know the first derivative is equal to 0.
over 4. Cosine of pi over 4. Radical 3 over 2. And then this realm, you see it's, it's going down, so this is decreasing. This is increasing. So at pi, we have our... Is it an absolute or is it local? Both. Is it the highest? If it's absolute, it has to be higher than any other point. No, because at this point, pi is 0 and 2 pi get the same value. But for this domain, yeah, for this domain, it's, it's both of them because it's both relative and it's absolute for that domain, 0 to pi. So the second derivative, so the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. Where is negative sine x equal to 0? Why would this help us? Why knowing where it equals zero, why is that going to help us? What, the point of inflection. Yeah, exactly, because at point of inflection, it changes from up to down, or down to up. Once we find this one, then we could go both sides, and then we have it. Same thing we do with the cosine. Find out whether the first derivative equals zero, and then we know at both sides whether it's increasing or decreasing. So the point of inflection, so where is negative sine x equal to 0 on Sine x is 0 at 0. Pi and 2 pi. So since we're looking at negative sine, the sine number starts, but it starts from here and it goes down to there. There's a negative sign. It just shifts the cosine over to the left. We can't really have a, a con uh, inflection point at the end point. Why not? Because you can't compare it to the left side. So zero doesn't work. 2 pi doesn't work. So the only point of inflection we'll have is at pi. What happens at pi? On the left-hand side, we'll have concave up. So if we went second derivative at pi over 2, let's say 2 pi over 3, two pi over 3 will give us a positive value, and the second derivative at 4 pi over 3 will give us a negative because the curve bends that way. So as it goes up, it changes direction. As it comes down, it changes direction. These are our point of inflections, midpoint of all the graphs. All the stuff related to science, to physics.
Solution problem. What does the S function find for us? So it finds us, let's call the position function. The first derivative of the position function finds us what? Velocity. The second derivative of the position function finds us the first derivative of the velocity, which becomes acceleration. The change of change of speed. So in the first derivative of our position function, in, instead of it's an increasing or decreasing function, we're looking at does it increase or decrease velocity? Or speed. Does the speed does, does does it increase speed or decrease speed? In the second derivative, concave up means the second derivative is positive. Means it's accelerating. It's going faster. Concave down means it's negative. Means it's decelerating. Negative acceleration is deceleration. Does it ever change direction of, of movement? Because as the position function moves left to right, the only thing changes is its velocity and its acceleration. That does it for those two sections. Yes, we'll spend a day. I want to try to finish up chapter four as fast as we can, and we'll do a bunch of problems from there as a review.